Um, you can say no, no, perhaps no. for okay. this one, I will use uh, qualitative. And for these two, I use quantitative. Okay, you have a simple form of mixed method. Okay, for triangulation, RQ1, method A, and method B, they both conform. Using two different methods, they both agree. Okay, that is triangulation. Okay, and sometimes we do this. Okay, we do it just just to confirm. Okay, uh, let's say uh, for ranking exercise, I use a delta method. At the same time, um, I use uh, coefficient of concordance, which is a non-parametric method for strength data. So I'm using a qualitative method and a quantitative method to confirm the findings. Okay, this becomes triangulation. You triangulate to confirm. Okay. Right? Yes, please. Say what? Any difference? Yeah. You have to know what you want to do actually. I can answer that, you know. It depends on your research. Okay, okay, let me, let's look at this one here again. Okay. Sometimes in that. I favor this actually. This the way I like. I like uh, the Caswell. Uh, if you want to do uh, mixed method, you should read work by Caswell. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, I like this because I start with qualitative, just to get an understanding. Okay, of how the interplay of the constructs. And then once I know that, I go deeper. Once I identify the themes from the qualitative. I go deeper and then I develop the quantitative method later. And meaning I start with perhaps the interview protocol or the observation guide, whatever. Okay? And after I'm done with my qualitative analysis, I look into the key findings and zoom into those and build my instrument for the quantitative analysis. And sometimes students what they do when they say <laughs> when they say they're doing mixed method, they're using qual quant or whatever and so on. You know, in the proposal, they throw everything. I mean, <laughs> how can you throw everything? Because because if you say you're doing poor one, okay, you have not done this yet. Okay, maybe you've got the instrument for qualitative, and you're hoping that you'll be able to identify the emerging themes from which you then later on develop the dedicated instrument. So when you submit early, you're saying you're doing poor one, you're sending out both the instruments in your appendix, then something is wrong. That you know already the constructs is coming up. It doesn't make sense. Why do okay, yeah, why do research? Yes, sir. How about if, uh, uh, let's say, uh, we start with from the quantitative, oh. then go to the qualitative, and also. then revise after we find out the inside. And also, he's saying our friend here is doing quantitative first and qualitative next. Can also. It all depends what you want to do. Meaning, you want to confirm. Because the uh, hypothesis yeah. uh, is made by my promoter together, yeah. but I feel it's not good. Yeah. And I make uh, and I uh, go to the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is the same. So yeah, this is the same. It depends on, on what you want to do. Okay. It depends on your research questions. How how you construct your research questions. Okay. okay? So, uh, if you want to do the quantitative, meaning, meaning, I said, eh? if you want to do the quantitative and follow by the qualitative, yes. and then uh, what you should do, based on the critical findings from your quantitative, the significant findings, those are the ones you use to develop the instrument for your qualitative. What force should you develop the instrument for something which is not significant? Right? Yes. So, you want to show, okay, based on my quantitative, these are the significant findings, A, B, C, D, and E. So from those, the constructs you have identified, you take it out, and then you develop the qualitative protocol, the interview questions, whatever and so on. Okay, it makes sense. Well, you should 
border let's assume okay uh, uh, service quality ni out of the five satu tu tak significant okay so now you want to do the qualitative okay so make sure you focus on the four significant four significant uh, dimension and and go deeper into why this four okay affect a particular uh, construction so on then you go uh, we end up with the revised model you come up with the revised model yes yes earlier we call it framework lah as a theory lah is it a framework as i'm using your oh, sorry as a theory So, so this thing with it is a framework or model. To me, lah, at the stage of doing a research, is is less a framework because it has not been proven yet. Okay, unless if you take a framework uh, which has uh, been done and you are using it on block, then can call it a model because it has been tested already. Yeah. Okay. So knowledge becomes obsolete very fast. What you know today, tomorrow becomes irrelevant. Okay, the same thing in analysis. Okay, in those good old days, you know, we got remember the old school Barrett and Kenny four step thing. You know, you know, but everybody loves. And then when uh, when some people say this is not good anymore, some people they go back home because they love Barrett and Kenny so much. You know, and then when we say, hey, you cannot use Barrett and Kenny because the, the assumption um, is not valid. And they start to introduce this thing called uh, the structural equation modeling. Okay, where certain assumptions are very uncanny, it doesn't apply anymore. All right? Remember those days when we were so excited with this thing called. Um, I have to be careful. I have been so busy with admin and all that thing. This 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 moderation analysis. Okay, if got quasi versus full, remember? One point after everybody was so excited. Oh, I want to test the level of moderation. Is it quasi or full? Okay, and then they come up with more advanced. They look into the 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 trajectory. Okay, uh, see whether it crosses path or not, and then you come up with the conclusion. Yes, this one is quasi. Yes, this one is full. But then along the way, preacher and he says you don't have to do all this anymore. <laughs> it becomes irrelevant. And now, okay, so. Methods of analysis change, you know, and there's so many gurus out there now. And the gurus out there now, they're not people like me, you know. They are, they are psychologists, sociologists. They're not, they're not pure statisticians. Okay, so for people like us from the old school, you know, sometimes we 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 feel, you know, ah, uh, you know, how can? <laughs> But then they come up with all their their analysis, okay, their. Uh, approach which, which makes sense okay that to the point even as statistician only okay now it makes sense okay before you know this um, this five point liquid scale you know uh, is it discrete or continuous you know among statistician this is straightforward discrete you know like people like pringle what were hands on they say this is continuous and they come up with their reasons why okay Uh, come to a point after we read all this argument, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, so this is where the beauty is. Because one more, one more. Okay. Uh, sometimes in life, yeah, um, you, you cannot put on this hard hat of being a hardcore uh, mathematician, whatever. You know, uh, from the business perspective, things differ. Okay. Uh, and, and 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 we have to be dynamic about it. We have to be able to accept this. Uh, take it with. Um, Uh, with an open heart and apply accordingly. If you disagree, fine. You can go back to the fundamentals and explain why. Because sometimes along the way, the reviewer is from those new school. They may not be so inclined, okay, to to you know embrace the old way of doing things. So uh, we as I, I'll just call ourselves that uh, we we as researchers, it's our job to know everything. So that we can people argue, you can argue back. You can argue back. Why am I using this method? You know, with facts, not just based on assumptions. With facts, that's the job of the researcher. Okay, let's go on. Okay, so knowledge becomes obsolete. You have to learn, relearn, unlearn over and over and over again. Okay. Um, so 
mentioned just now, old school Baron Kenny, okay, um, it's not so widely used as before. Now everybody's switching to the uh, structure equation modeling, okay. Um, worst of wisdom number three, okay, uh, it's no longer practice, 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 okay, it's practice, discuss, and publish, okay. It's, oh, forgot to hit the button. <laughs> sorry, 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 okay. Um, practice, discuss, and publish, okay. Um, if, if you are studying in Malaysia, uh, publication is the requirement, the way forward, okay. Uh, in Africa, they don't care. <laughs> I'm happy in Africa, nobody cares. <laughs> uh, so, um, but then again, it's, it's a good, it's a good, um, but, you know, you know, sometimes, sometimes, uh, the desire to publish, you know, uh, to me, you know, uh, this publication, graduate on time, I personally feel um, a student um, should go at their own pace. Don't, don't, don't try to rush things. If you can't write, okay, um, um, don't push the student to still write, okay, and because when, when the paper gets rejected, the, the student gets demoralized, okay? Uh, sometimes this guiding hand approach um, and writing papers together has to be understood. Uh, I'm not going to detail it because emotional later on. Okay, but then again, um, um, if you want to write, okay, you have to practice your methods, you have to discuss with your colleagues or with your supervisor, okay, and then you have to do um, the publication. There's not the parallel session of publication. Tomorrow also, I know there's one. Um, and there are many forms of publication to get your work done and publish, okay. Um, you can go through conferences such as this. Okay, um, you can go into the open access journals and so on and whatever and so on. And some are paid journals, okay, uh, some are predatory journals and so on. You have to be careful. In Indonesia, the requirement dicti imposes on types of journals you can publish. Even though it's scopus, but then because it falls into this uh, criteria, and uh, that becomes a no-go. Okay. So, <clears throat> five fundamental issues. Number one is, uh, <clears throat> methods used must answer the research questions. So, or address the research objective. Objectives and questions pretty much the same. Okay? Um, but, as, as shown here, should I use uh, a qualitative tool or quantitative tool for the first research question? Okay? Uh, so, how you formulate the research question also shows your level of intellectualism. Okay? Uh, how you piece together the constructs, the interplay of variable A, variable B, variable C together also shows your level of intellectualism. Okay, you must have this skill lah, of writing, you know. Um, and it doesn't come over that. You have to, you have to practice a lot and okay, work hard. You know, uh, my experience, I've, I think I've graduated about 55 or <coughs> students in the past. Um, my, my, one of my students is an Iranian. Anybody from Iran here? Please raise your hands. Any Iranian here? No? No? Sure. Huh? Okay, we can talk bad about Iranians now. <laughs> 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 you know, my, one of my students is an Iranian. His name was uh, Ahmad Reza Shekel Zadeh. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, this guy came, you know, and. Um, I took him in as my student because I just looked into his CV. But the moment I saw him, I said, oh my God, I'm going to die standing here. Because this guy doesn't speak English. And, uh, I don't even know how he managed to you know, get through the qualifying requirements of English, whatever, but he was struggling, you know, I don't understand. And I thought to myself, I'm going to die standing. And I have to, I have to coach him, I have to spend Every week, about three to four hours, just to teach him grammar and English, you know, and uh, uh, it was difficult. And every time he brings this dictionary, this Farsi dictionary, you know, <laughs> he will record everything, you know, my pearls of wisdom. He records everything and listens. And the next day, he's got good, he's got good set of brain. You can remember, and he picks up things very fast. The good news was, I'm talking about practice, practice, practice versus practice, discuss, and publish the previous slide. 
Okay. Um, the good news is this guy he he picks up things very fast. He's smart. And he was slow in communicating, but up here he was smart. Still is. So cut short the story. After one year, he starts to write. He gets so published. And then he gets into all the you know school books, he backpacked journals, and, all. and now he's a chief editor of an Emerald publication. Mm -hmm. you know? So so meaning in life it is not impossible to achieve things if you work hard, you discuss with your supervisor, you work well as a team, can be done. Okay? So so uh, I, I just want to motivate everyone. Sometimes people say it's difficult to, to, to construct a research question. You know, as I said to you, you know, the ability to write good research questions sets you apart. Okay, the reader will know this guy. He knows the subject matter. He writes in a very concise and precise manner. Okay, um, give you some example. Okay, um, these are simple ones. Okay, um, this is on human resource management. Um, which human resource management practices are important with technology-based SMP simulation? Look, huh? And so I just picked up from some of my former students, if you can remember, I think this is Azdin. Um, <coughs> see, see, the, the way it is being consulted, eh? you, you read this, <coughs> you see the difference. Because the focus is on not just SME, not just SME, but technology-based SME. And this is where the uniqueness of the study is okay because you see SMP <laughs> you just go through Google there's about 5,347,000 papers of SMP human resource and so on so many but if you're talking about technology based SMP then number becomes a bit smaller okay meaning when you do research okay the idea of novelty must be there you must show that your research is for something new Okay, we just say SME, so what? It's a million over studies done on SME. Okay? And these are the things the, the reader or the reviewer or the examiner would ask you. So what? I can show you, you know, this list of studies, past studies, almost the same with whatever you're doing. Where is the novelty? Where is your contribution to the body of art? That's to use this word. This big, powerful word. What is the contribution to the body of knowledge? <laughs> the moment you become an examiner, this is your favorite word, you know. <laughs> what is the contribution to the body of knowledge? Your study. You know. so, so the contribution is I'm looking at a very narrow aspect. It's called the technology-based SME. Okay. Then <clears throat> number one is just to identify uh, practices. Number two, what effects do certification has on the practice? Okay. And then do HR practices? And I just bad English over there, it does, yeah. And organizational performance in terms of SMEs how differ based on organizational background. Okay, we need to looking at the profile of the organization. And can we predict certain things and so on? Okay, this is the old school, you know. If you look into thesis coming out um, 10, 12 years ago, pretty much like this. Most are like this. You know? uh, meaning, if I were to look into the methods deployed, okay. Um, how do we solve this? Okay. Um, this is the tool that we use, Delphi method. Here I'm using this thing called the mixed method. Okay. I'm using Delphi method with a non-parametric tool. Okay. Um, and here, in fact, when we say effect, we have to compare before and after, pre-test, post-test analysis. Okay. Pre-test, post-test analysis. So. Um, and I do what we call a dependent sample key test. Uh, if you want this, you just write to the organizer. They will send to you. Okay? Knowledge is meant to be shared. I will share this with you. Just write to Brother Imran. Say, Brother Imran, the organizer, uh, you want Amran's uh, material, and I will give it to you. Okay. Just listen and understand. Okay? Uh, what was I saying is done? Okay, um, pre test, post test, before and after. Let's say I, I want to do an analysis. Your understanding of methodology before and after. Before you enroll in this short workshop and after, and we do some tests, I hope <laughs> there's some improvement. Okay, that's it. At least there's a degree of transfer of competence to you. Okay? And, and um, whether, whether they differ or not, meaning 
comparing. Eh? When you say differ or not, you compare between two or three 